This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this light burst effect using GIMP. So I'll go ahead and open up a new document here in GIMP. I'll go to File, New, and I want to set the document size to 1280 by 720 pixels. I'll go down to Advanced Options um, for the color space, RGB, Fill with um, Foreground Color. We want to choose that because we have black and white uh, as the default when you open up GIMP, it's black as a foreground and white as a background. So I want to fill it with the foreground color and go ahead and click OK. And it should create a new document with the black background like that. And I'm just going to hold Control and roll down the mouse wheel once to zoom out a little bit. And what I'm going to do is create some text to lay on top of here that's going to be um, I'm going to use to apply the effect to. So I'm going to grab the text tool. I'm going to flip the foreground and the background colors around. And from the font, I'm going to choose a font called uh, League Gothic, but you could use whatever font you'd like. This works with uh, virtually any font. Uh, the size, I'm going to use 187 for this specific font anyway. I mean, if, for whatever font you're using, you may have to use a different size. I'm just going to click on the canvas here. I'm just going to write burst for the sake of this tutorial. And like I mentioned, you could adjust the size over here. I'll leave it at like 180 for now. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab the alignment tool and click on the text. And then from the relative to drop down, I'm going to choose image and I'm going to center it up on the uh, horizontal and vertical axis like that. And what I'm going to do now is just go back to the move tool to get out of that. I'm going to right click on the text layer and go to alpha to selection. And then I'm going to turn off the visibility of that layer by clicking that eyeball icon next to it. And I'm going to click this icon to create a new layer above that. We're going to use transparency, click OK. And I'm going to go to edit fill with foreground color and that's going to make that white and I'll go to select none and what I want to do now is go to filters blur and motion blur and from this drop down uh, from this uh, actually this menu here the first thing you want to do is uncheck the preview menu because this is what we're going to do is pretty CPU intensive and if, if you leave the preview checked on as we go and adjust these settings, it's going to take a long time just to render the preview, which uh, you don't, you're not going to want to deal with because it just it, it takes forever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to zoom, blur outward, and I want the X and Y set to 640 by 360. The whole point of this is that the, uh, it, the blur center point is half the dimensions, half the size of each dimension. So this is 1280 width, this document, so we're going to use 640 as the vertical, as the X uh, center point. And the same thing with the height. It's um, The height is uh, uh, 720, so we use half of that, which is 360. So uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to length, and I'm going to set that to 190. Then I'll go ahead and click OK. And it's going to take um, probably a minute or two for this to process. So just go ahead and have some patience while that processes. Okay, and once that's done, as you can see, we have our uh, almost looks like the text is just uh, bursting outwards. It's, a, it's, it's like an outward blur, but we're not quite done yet. We still have more to do. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to import the image of a, uh, a galaxy image. I'm just going to open it up here. I'll have a link to this image in the description of the video. So just go ahead and uh, copy this image and paste it as a new layer. Or you can just save it like I've done here and just click and drag it into GIMP like that. Let me zoom out a little more. If you notice the image, if you notice the bounding box here, the image is much larger than the canvas. So I'm going to grab the scaling tool and I'm going to click on the image because we're going to scale that. I'm going to bring this opacity down a little bit so I can see the document beneath it. And I'm going to grab the center point and just shift this document over here like that. Then I'll grab this bottom right corner, hold control and just scale it down. We want the image to be slightly bigger than the actual canvas size. We don't want it to be smaller or even the same size. We want it to be slightly bigger like that. Go ahead and click scale. And now I'm going to, let me zoom back in a little bit. I'm going to sharpen these colors up a little bit. So I'll go to colors, levels, and I'm going to take this left node over here and bring this to the right. Then I'll take this right node and bring this to the left like that. I'll bring this over some more. I can adjust the center node. Maybe do something like that. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and click OK to finalize that. And now what I want to do is go to layer, uh, layer to image size. And that's going to make the layer be the same size of the image. And what I'm going to do now is apply uh, a motion blur to this as well, only to a lesser degree. So I'll go to filter, blur, motion blur. And for this one, we want to use just 50. Go ahead and click OK. And again, allow it to uh, do its thing. 
And there you go, you have the motion blur. So the next thing we want to do is turn off the visibility of this layer. And we want to go to Edit, Copy Visible. And then we'll turn off the visibility of this layer, the white text, or the white burst effect rather. And then on this galaxy layer, uh, I'm going to turn the visibility back on. And then I'm going to right click the layer and go to Add Layer Mask. I'm going to choose White Full Opacity, go ahead and click Add. And then I'll go to Edit, Paste. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on this anchor icon up here because it pasted it as a floating layer. I'm just going to anchor it down. And what I'll do next is I'm going to duplicate this layer by clicking this button right here that says create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. And then I want to click on, on this duplicate layer, I want to click on the blue galaxy image right there to make sure we have that selected. And I'm going to go to colors, colorize, and I'm going to take this hue and bring this over to the right to give that a blue color. Go ahead and click OK. I mean a red color. Go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to click on the black and white icon next to it, that little thumbnail there. And I'm going to go to Colors, uh, Curves, and I'm going to adjust that a little bit. I'm going to add some more black to the image by taking this bottom left node and just bringing that right like that. I'll take this and bring this to the left a little bit. This is just so we're getting a nice mix of blue and red. Like it's red at the beginning here and then blue as it gets outward. And go ahead and click OK to finalize that. And for where the layer, with this where it says mode, for the layer mode, I'm going to set that to addition. And what I'll do next is uh, I'm going to create a new layer on top of this. So go ahead and click the uh, create new layer icon. Again, transparency. I'm going to right click on the burst, the text layer again, and go to alpha to selection. And then click back on our new layer and go to edit, fill with foreground color to create more white text there. Then I'll go to Select None, and then I'm going to apply a blur to this as well. So I'll go to Filters, Blur, Motion Blur, and I'll use 50 for this as well. So just go ahead and click OK. And for the mode of this one, I will set this to Grain Merge. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the Burst Text layer. I'm going to turn the visibility of that back on. and there you have it. That's pretty much the burst text effect with GIMP. So there's one final step I'd like to go over, and that's just adjusting the colors a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this top layer up here, and then I'm going to right click on it and go to New from Visible. And that's going to create an entirely new flattened layer from everything that's visible on the screen. So once we've done that, I'm going to go to Colors, Curves, and I'm going to take this node over here in the bottom left and just bring that up a little bit. And if you notice, it kind of fades out the colors as you do that. So you don't want to do it too much. And then once I've done that, I'll just take this segment of the line and just bring that down a little bit. So we end up with something like that. And now from this drop down, the channel drop down, I'll go to blue. I'll take this node and slide this up to add more blue to the image. And then again, I'll do the same thing. I'll take this line, bring that down a little bit so that it takes a little bit off the edges of the light effect. And then I want to go to the red channel and I want to add some red to the image, just a little bit of red like that. And then I'll take this top node and bring this to the left so it brings out the red within the actual design itself. And if you want, you could even adjust it a little bit and play with it and get the nice, get the right effect. Maybe something like that. That looks pretty good right there. So I'll go ahead. It, you know what? You could toggle the preview off and on to see the difference. And if you notice, this is what we originally had. And this is the effect now. I think it, I personally just think it looks better like this. Maybe you'll take this red out of there like that. There we go. That looks pretty good as it is. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And that should do it for this tutorial. That's how you can create that um, light burst effect using GIMP. So if you haven't done so, done, if you haven't done so already, be sure to join the Logos by Nick mailing list in order to receive email alerts when new tutorials are posted. Your information won't be sold to or shared with anyone else, and you will never receive spam or promotional offers from me of any kind. In fact, the only time you will hear from me is when new tutorials are posted, and you will get to watch them on the Logos by Nick website without any ads. So go ahead and check the link in the description if you're interested in that. And as always, thanks for watching.